Climate change in Australia looks like much hotter summers and much drier droughts. Climate change in Australia looks like thousands of homes that we've lost to fires. It looks like the floods that are drowning our east coast. It looks like the destruction of our natural land. And climate change also looks like inequality. It looks like the people at the margins of Australian society experiencing climate change much more severely than those who are privileged. But it also looks like Centrelink payouts, government subsidies, it looks like insurance bailouts, amazing emergency services, nationwide education programs. It looks like a $9.6 billion infrastructure budget. Climate change in Australia looks like privilege. I would like to see Indigenous and local knowledge brought to the forefront of climate change discourse. There is a lot of untapped knowledge that can help us build resilience in the community. Education and funding should be made accessible for these programs for them to be able to make a wide difference. I want to see more ambitious targets. I want to see decarbonisation immediately. And I want to see Indigenous voices centralised in the discussions of climate change. I would like to see a transition to renewable energy that addresses the needs of energy users, everyday people and businesses. I believe that access to energy is essential in the 21st century. As renewable energy infrastructure is built and as the workforce is equipped with the relevant expertise, governments and industry should work together to ensure the stability of energy prices and access to energy so that the transition can be as smooth as possible. Effective action on climate change has consistently been undermined by ideological differences and a lack of multilateral cooperation internationally. To advance action on climate change, we need productive, goal-oriented collaboration between nation-states, multilateral organisations, financial institutions and industry. Anthropogenically induced climate change does not care about political ideologies and differences, yet the environment will continually degrade whilst division prevents action. We have a limited time to act, and we need collective global action now. In my everyday life, I'm doing what I think all of us should be doing, which is trying to educate the people around us on climate change and what they can be doing to help us make a better world.